All right, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon and thank you for still being with us here this afternoon. Our program continues with the second session of Opportunities for Growth with Martrade's Network of Global Trade Officers with four former trade commissioners. If you have just joined us, for your information, Martrade has 46 overseas trade officers, which is led by either a trade commissioner TC or a marketing officer, MO. And TCs are stationed overseas for approximately four years and are sent on a rotation basis. And now, without further ado, I would like to call on stage Mr. Chong Yung Jung, former TC of Matrit Chengdu. In 2014, Mr. Chong was posted to Western China as TC of Chengdu. Now, he is attached to the Electrical and Electronics, ICT and Missionary and Equipment section, promoting missionary, parts and components to global markets. Let us welcome Mr. Chong Yung Jung. Next, we have Ms. Amilaton Fazlina Zakaria, former TC of Martrade Rotterdam. Ms. Amilatun served as the TC at Martrade Rotterdam, the Netherlands, from 2015 to 2019. And currently, she is assigned to the Internal Audit Unit of Martrade. Let us welcome Ms. Amilatun Fazlina Zakaria. Our third speaker is Mr. Izam Kyle Ishak, former TC of Martrade Seoul. Mr. Izam served as a TC in Matrit Hong Kong and Matrit Chengdu before being posted to Matrit Seoul in 2015. Currently, he is attached to the transport and logistics section of Matrit. Let us welcome Mr. Isham. <laughs> and lastly, Mr. Shah Nizam Ahmad, former TC of Matrit Tokyo. Mr. Shah Nizam has also had several overseas assignments. He served in Matrade Los Angeles and Matrade Chennai before being posted to Matrade Tokyo in 2015. Currently, he is attached to the Customized Program section in Matrade. Let us welcome Mr. Shah Nizam Ahmad. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, the WhatsApp number for you to post any questions will be on the screen shortly. So please do not be shy to post any questions that you have for them. So now, let us welcome our first speaker, Mr. Chong Yun Jang, former TC of Matrade Chengdu. Mr. Chong. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to our second session this afternoon. May I present the next topic on doing business in China. This is a country data of China as of last year. China covered a land area of 9.6 million square kilometers with total populations of 1.4 billion people living in 23 provinces, five autonomous regions, four municipalities and two special administrative regions, which are Hong Kong and Macau. The China GDP in 2018 was $13.6 making China the second largest economy in the world after the United States of America. The total trade recorded last year was USD $4.6 in which the total export was 2.5 trillion, while the total import was 2.1 trillion. China has been enjoying trade surplus for many years and has been the largest trading partner with many countries, including Malaysia. The per capita income of China was 9,800 USD, similar to Malaysia right now, and the disposable income per capita was 4,300. The main language used in China is Putonghua or Mandarin. However, for our Malaysian exporters that do not speak Mandarin, 
It is easy for you to find a translator to assist you at the business negotiation. Why China is important? Number one, as you can see that, China itself is a huge market with 1.4 billion population that create the single largest consumer market in the world. Secondly, China is the world's largest electronic products manufacturing base. Last year, China imports of integrated circuits value at 300 billion USD for the assembly of its electronic products. Currently, China is still highly dependable on the imports of high technology integrated circuits, as currently it's only focused on producing low to medium grade integrated circuits for the domestic market. Thirdly, China is the world's second largest insurance market in the world after the United States of America. Last year, its insurance premium reaching 575 billion USD and is forecasted to be the largest insurance market in the middle of 2030. China will be the world's largest retail market by end of this year, with an estimated value of 5.64 trillion, and this is in line with mega sales during these festive seasons, such as 11 November or so-called the single days, and the New Year grand sales. The emergence of more third and fourth tier cities in China with rising disposable income following the new phases of urbanization and industry transformation. Alibaba's latest earnings report stated that 70% of its new users of its e marketplaces actually came from third and lower tier cities. So, who are those first tier cities? First tier cities are referring to Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen. And while the second tier cities are the capital cities of the uh, each provinces. Number six, China is also the world's largest furniture production base and also the largest exporter, with a total value of 53.7 billion USD, up 7.6% year on year. Some items sourced from Malaysia are such as sawn rubber wood, parts and components to make popular white wooden furniture. China is also the world number two crude oil consumer and number three natural gas consumer. China is the world's largest crude oil importer with a total import value of 239.2 billion or with a total volume of 461.9 metric tons followed by the United States and India. In 2018, China was the world's second largest LNG importer after Japan with an import volume of 73.5 billion cubic meter. China is also the world's largest importer of rubber with a total import volume of 7.01 million metric ton. The major import sources of China are Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Vietnam. China, in fact, has signed a strategic agreement with Thailand to source their natural rubber at a reasonable pricing. Here are some of the market opportunities that we have identified for our attendance today. The first one is food and beverages. The massive population in China has created the, si the sizable food and beverage market. According to statistics, there are nearly 200 million younger generation that born in the year 1998 or later that account for 15% of household spending. They tend to be adventurous and would like to try out imported food and beverages. The implementation of second child policy right now has opened market for imported milk powder and cereals. The rising number of middle-income family to 33.2 million last year, which has at least 3 million yuan of asset per family, 
tend to look for better quality food items. Not to forget, also about 350 million senior citizens aged 60 and above demand for food supplements and healthcare products. In fact, Matric has established good contact with a newly opened UC wholesale market in Chongqing and the top 10 largest wholesale market, which is Mengyang Wholesale Center in Sichuan, to expand your sales channel that cover the market of almost 100 million population living in these two regions. You may also utilize e-marketplaces such as Jingdong, Taobao, and Tmall to have a quick access to a large number of online food shoppers. Okay, sorry, just now we skipped. Okay, the second market opportunity is Malaysian made cosmetic, skincare, and toiletries. Currently, cosmetic with private labels and small brands are more popular among the middle and lower income group. The Korean cosmetic brands has penetrated into this market segment successfully. As part of the import policy encouraged by China, the China Inspection and Quarantine Department allowed faster market accessibility for cosmetic, skincare, and toiletries with shorter approval period to three to four months instead of 12 to 20 months in the past via cross-border e-commerce business models, which allowed lesser testing and market access fee. In addition, men's skincare and cosmetics are picking up fast with promotion by Chinese bloggers and famous artists who become opinion leaders to its fans and followers. The third market opportunity would be commodities such as palm oil, rubber, wood, and LNG. We observe that there are an increasing demands for this food, rubber, and LNG from the man massive manufacturing and construction sector, along with new phases of urbanization and industry transformation. For instance, the launching of Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area will create demand for wooden and rubber-based building materials. With one belt and one road initiative and the 21st century maritime silk route, the shipment period and transportation costs to Western China has reduced using the railway transport connecting Qingzhou port in Guangxi province. Our Malaysian companies have more experience in international trade. They can offer consulting and advisory services to assist Chinese companies to source for more commodities from Malaysia or from the countries. Finally, yet importantly, the Go Green policy is the China environmental protections policy to speed up China energy industry transformations towards clean energy and to reduce carbon emissions and land and water pollution. One of the green energy used is liquefied natural gas it is estimated that 50 million metric tons of LNG to be imported by end of this year. So what does it take to succeed in China? It's actually not too difficult. Firstly, you must have a modern design and nice packing for your products. Since the product life cycle tends to be short, you must do your R&D and always keep your product innovative. Secondly, Choosing the right partner that have market influence and existing sales channels to push your market products quicker to the market. Thirdly, China important and consumer tend to be price sensitive. Therefore, you must make sure you have pricing co competitiveness in the price war. Fourthly, do your own market research. Market research is vital and is important to build your personal relationship with your potential partners. Number fifth, employing your own personal legal accounting and taxation advisor in order to protect your interests in China. Remember, do the thing right at the first time and to have full compliance with the requirement by the local law and regulations. Lastly, setting up your own sales and service center in order to support your customers it can be your distributor, it can be your wholesalers, 
as well as to answer the inquiry from your end consumer and to ease your monitoring of your sales. In the past, Martrade have assisted many exporter and services provider to export to China and to penetrate into this huge market. For instance, Martrade has linked Elegant Language Center to work with public universities and higher institutions in the provinces such as Qinghai, Sichuan, Chongqing, Ningxia, and so on. Matre also matched Persatuan Perkembangan Industri Salang Burung Walid, Malaysia for the bird nest with Ji Ping Tang Group, which has over 70 premium outlets throughout China. And we have also introduced Pahang Food Grower Association for Durian to UC International Wholesale Center to set up a fruit distribution center in Western China. We have also assisted Lamson Edible Oil to secure a buyer. In fact, one container of dry order has reached China in the month of July. And we have uh, introduced Kerda Trade Company Limited to Bay Revenue Sandinian Berhad to repack and to distribute cooking oil in Sichuan. And the buyer is expected to come for a site visit on 28 October, which is this month. To conclude my presentation today, please remember that China is a large and a complicated market. It is important to have a proper business plan in order to compete for your survival in China. Be patient as the decision making by your potential partner may be slow and the market visit is vital because seeing is believing and it's important for the relationship building. If you are very new to China market, please kindly contact our China desk at Matric HQ or you may choose to contact our trade commissioners based in Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou and Chengdu for assistance. The time to export is now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chong. Up next, we have Ms. Amilatun, former TC of Madrid, Rotterdam. Let us welcome Ms. Amilatun. Thank you, Diane. Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Just now, we already listened to Mr. Chong on China market. Now, let me bring you to the Netherlands market in Europe. Netherlands literally means lower lands in reference to its low elevation and flat topography. Most of the areas in the Netherlands is actually below the sea level, including the Amsterdam airport Schiphol. The size of the country is just about the size of Pahang State, with uh, 70 million populations. It's a small country, but they have a very strong economy with GDP per capita of USD 52,000. The capital and the business center is located in Amsterdam, but there are also a lot of businesses located in Rotterdam due to the port of Rotterdam. The official language is Dutch, but uh, most of them speak um, very good English, so there is no language barrier if you want to do business with them. The Netherlands also is a member of the Europo European Union and they follow most of the EU rules and regulations. During winter, the time difference is with Malaysia is six hours and uh, seven hours during summer. There is a direct flight from Kuala Lumpur to Amsterdam, which takes about 12 to 13 hours to arrive. So, why the Netherlands? The Netherlands is known as a gateway to Europe with access to more than 700 million uh, consumers with high spending power. It is centrally located between Europe's main consumer markets such as UK, Germany and France, which can be reached within 24 hours from the Netherlands. The Netherlands could be your best partner to reach the European market. Secondly, the Netherlands also has the first-class infrastructure 
It has become a key hub for distribution in Europe because of its favourable location and the country's world-class air and sea ports, such as the port of Rotterdam and Amsterdam Airport Schiphol. The port of Rotterdam is the largest port in Europe and the world's eighth largest container port, handling 440.5 million metric tons of cargo annually. While the Schiphol Airport is the main international airport in the Netherlands and the third busiest airport in Europe in terms of passengers, the high-speed road, rail and broadband networks are also among the best in the Netherlands. The Netherlands is also known as a hub for international trade and home to more distribution centres compared to other countries in Europe, with a lot of trading hub being set up in the Netherlands. In 2018 alone, the Netherlands exported value was USD 723.3 billion. It shows that with such a small size of country, their economy is very strong. It is the most desirable location because of the proximity to the main industrial and consumer markets. The, the country is highly ranked in innovation and was ranked the second most innovative nation in the world in 2018 Global Innovation Index. And the Netherlands is the sixth largest economy in the European Union after Germany, UK, France, Italy and Spain. Now let's see, what are the top five major exports of products to the Netherlands from Malaysia? The main major export products to the Netherlands is electrical and electronic products with 48.4% of total export value, followed by palm oil and palm oil-based products, which is the agriculture, manufactures of metal, and also palm oil-based manufactured products. And what are the Netherlands import from the, from the world? The top five major imports are mineral fuel, oil, etc., with 17.2% of total import value, Machi electrical machinery, machinery vehicles, not including railways, as well as the pharmaceutical products. In 2018, the Netherlands was 14th largest trading partner and also export destination for Malaysia. In EU itself, Netherlands is the second largest trading partner after Germany. Among the ASEAN countries, Malaysia was the second largest trading partner after the Singapore and the third largest export destination after Singapore and Thailand. Now let us see what are the opportunities available in the market. Green, sustainable and eco-friendly products are in high demand in the market. It across, it across furniture, packaging, disposable items as well as organic food. Environmental awareness has been rising steadily in Europe. The people are well aware of the environmental threats, particularly plastic waste, climate change, pesticide use and other threats to biodiversity. The demand for sustainably produced products has been increasing globally in recent years. For information, 85% of all waste in the waters within the European Union is made up of plastic. Therefore, the EU now is banning the use of plastic swaps, plastic plates, and cutlery. Dutch consumers increasingly seek products that reflect ethical treatment of workers and environmentally conscious. Sustainable product sourcing has become a top priority for retailers in France, Germany, Italy, including the Netherlands and Spain because of the growing consumer demands. The retailers in the Netherlands itself now introducing a plastic-free packaging for organic and non-organic products. It's not only that. Most of the hospitals also now looking at bio-based or biodegradable products for disposable items. So it is important for you, if you, want, if you are interested in the market, your product should be related to the green, sustainable and eco-friendly products. Producers must come up with an environmentally friendly alternative. For example, there is one Malaysian company produced um, cutlery plates and um, 
uh, kitchenware using a fala leaf, a daun pokok pinang. They are very, they are doing very good in Europe. They participated in one of our exhibitions and they receive a lot of uh, inquiries uh, from the European buyers. Their post during the exhibition was so busy and we are so happy to assist them with the uh, uh, deal over there. Next, what are the opportunities available in the market? Another opportunity would be the medical product. Europe is a major hub for the global medical industry and the EU accounts for one third of the global market with the size of 14.5 billion USD. Rapidly aging population in Europe, 23% of the population currently aged 60s and older. People over the age of 60 years use more healthcare related products and services than younger people. So products such as specialized wound care, easy to use home care products, also home care services, self-care products, or more remotely monitorable diagnostic equipment are among the demand in the market. So I, I, I urge the Malaysian companies exporters to focus on healthcare products that are especially useful for the care of elderly patients. There is also increasing purchasing power and demand for innovative medical, product, medical products. And also uh, in, an increasing privatization of healthcare system. Many countries in Europe have faced financial pressure on their healthcare budgets. As a result, they need to increase the efficiency of all healthcare systems and reduce the cost. As we know, the European also very advanced in the healthcare industry, so they have the significant interest in medical software and e-health e -health products. We are talking about products, uh, opportunities in the market, but not, let, but not to forget the services available in the market. ICT is the um, opportunities for you to enter the market. It can be ICT applications, software, for transport and logistics, creative industry, internet of things, gaming, and healthcare. The Netherlands is a leading ICT innovator and a digital gateway to Europe. It has strong ICT infrastructure and open innovation model that leads to high-level research. Market size is predicted to increase to around 1.2 trillion euro in 2020 and expected to grow at an impressive average annual growth rate of 22%. More than 65% of the business expected to use IoT products by 2020. And Europe is responsible for nearly 40% of the global IoT market. Moreover, the Dutch are keenly focused on cyber security and have developed various centers of expertise such as the Hague Security Delta. The quality of ICT infrastructure and security in the Netherlands make it an attractive location for foreign investors. An ex extensive network of companies and knowledge institutions in the Netherlands has taken the initiative to develop new techniques that can significantly improve the productivity. Smart environments for homes, healthcare and finance is also in demand in the European market. So what are the key success factors for you to enter the Netherlands or the European market? We are no longer can compete with price and we need to differentiate our products and services. We need to come out with quality, innovative and sustainable products if you want to be in the market. The Malaysian companies also has to comply with the standards and certifications as the Netherlands is a member of EU you have to comply with the EU rules and regulations. It is um, a long process uh, for you to gain the, to, for you to comply with the EU rules and regulations. But we are here to guide you. How can you comply to the to the regulations?
Another uh, important thing for you is to have informative and up-to-date website. I know now a lot of companies have Facebook page and IG, but still to them, having a website is important because uh, it shows professionalism. You know, so it's still important for you to have an informative and up-to-date website. Uh, the Dutch people is a very friendly business people, but they are also very detailed in making decisions. So it sometimes takes quite long for you to for them to make decisions. So you have to always follow up with them, always respond promptly, and provide a good after sales service. You know? Because the Dutch business people still look at Malaysia as trustworthy, good command of English, having high skill workers, and hardworking. So let's keep the good identity, the good uh, uh, character, you know, for the business people. Because um, to them, we are still among the best country in Asia for them to work with. If you are interested to explore the Netherlands and Europe market, you can contact us anytime. Or my colleague in Rotterdam, Ms. Emiliana Zainul, uh, as you can see the contact details in the slide. So we aim to serve you. So please connect with us, and we are more than happy to assist you. With that, I thank you for your kind attention. All the best, and have a good day. Thank you, Ms. Amilatun. Up next, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Isham Kyle Isham, former TC of Matrade Seoul. Let us welcome Mr. Isham. Thank you very much, Diane. Assalamu alaikum and a very good afternoon to everyone. Before I start further with my presentation, I just want to chat with you. I guess everyone, if not, sorry, I guess majority um, of people here in this room will be familiar with Korea. Correct me if I'm wrong. It could be because of the overplayed song, Gangnam Style, or it could be because of the food, kimchi or the Samyang noodles. Or it could be because you might own a Samsung brand, like the handphone. Or it could be like um, you are in love with the drama Winter in Sonata. So it could be one of those. But uh, today I'm not going to talk about those things, but it's going to be something a bit um, serious, which is uh, doing business, uh, business opportunities in the Republic of Korea. My name is Izam Kalisha. I'm the former Trade Commissioner of Matrix Seoul. Some facts about Korea. The capital city is Seoul. The population at the moment is about 51.6 million people. The land area is 100,033 square kilometers. The main language spoken is, uh, is Korean. And the main religions are Buddhists and uh, Christians. The GDP as of last year, stood at 1.59 trillion US dollars, as compared to Malaysia, which is 354.9 billion US dollars. The GDP per capita in Korea stood at 30,896,000 US dollars, as compared to Malaysia, which is 9,798,000 US dollars. And the GDP growth for Korea last year was 2.7%, and Malaysia was 4.7%. So let us take a look at what are the strengths of Korea. First, Korea is the 12th largest economy in the world. It's also the fourth largest market in Asia, ninth largest trading nation in the world, it is, has such a big purchasing power with total population of more than 51 million people. 
is the 12th largest GDP in the world, and approximately 17,000 foreign invested companies currently in uh, Korea. And uh, it is also ranked as the fifth in ease of doing business in the world. And now we take a look at the trade performance between Malaysia and Korea as of last year. The total trade registered between Malaysia and Korea last year was valued at 17.98 billion US dollars. The total export to Korea from Malaysia was valued at 8.33 billion US dollars, whereas the total imports from Korea last year was valued at 9.64 billion US dollars. When we took a look, uh, take a look at the major exports to Korea last year, the main, the top five products that were exported to Korea, number one, these electrical and electronic products, mainly semiconductor devices, integrated circuits and transistors, valued at 2.79 billion US dollars, or kept, um, or kept less about 33.5% of total machine exports to Korea. Second is the LNG, valued at 5.24 billion US dollars, sorry, uh, 1.29 billion US dollars, and uh, holds about 15.6% of total export to Korea. And uh, the third product is the petroleum products, uh, valued at 0.62 billion US dollars, and command about only 7.5% of our export to Korea. And it follows by manufacturers of metal, mainly aluminium, with 0.5 uh, uh, billion US dollars, and um, holds about 6% of our export. And the last, or the, the, the top five, and the last, the fifth product exported to Korea is chemicals and chemical products, mainly alcohols, phenols, and the derivatives, valued at 0.4 billion US dollars, and, um, and the value about 4.8% of total export to Korea. Now, take a look at the major imports from Korea last year. The top product imported from Korea was electrical and electric products, mainly semiconductor, again, um, integrated circuits, transistors, valued at 2.56 billion US dollars, and holds about 26.5% of our total imports from Korea. The second most imported products from Korea was petroleum products, valued at 1.51 billion US dollars, and holds about 15.7%. The third product was chemicals and chemical products, which shows about one point, uh, imported value about 1.18 billion US dollars, and um, holds about 12.2% of our, our import from Korea. And last, uh, and the top five, I'm uh, sorry, the, the fourth products would be machinery, equipment, and parts. Uh, for example, like compressors, fans, centrifuges, and with total export import value of 0 0.93 billion US dollars and holds about 9.7% of our total imports. And uh, the fifth product would be iron and steel products. It would be like, for example, the mainly hot roll bar or rod, cool rod or iron steel. And the total value import was 0 0.76 billion US dollars with 7.9% of the market share. Now, last, Korea was Malaysia's eighth largest trading partner, ninth largest export destination, and the eighth largest source of imports. Now, we look at the market opportunities in Korea. The first the first and the second item would be plywood and wooden furniture. Malaysia's total export of wooden products to Korea last year was valued at 311 US dollars, 311 million US dollars, and whereby plywood and veneer were the main two exported products to Korea. According to the Korea Wood Panel Association, the demand for imported plywood into Korea was due to the price competitiveness and also for its quality. So it shows that that's actually a market for plywood into Korea. And for furniture, wooden and rubber wood furniture have potential in Korea. The export of Malaysia's furniture last year was valued at 102.4 million ringgit. 
The Korean buyers were fascinated with Malaysian furniture products because of their high quality, modern design, as well as unique craftsmanship. The trend in Korea now, when it comes to furniture, is to come out with smart furniture. It is, for example, like you have a bed, but you incorporate with this storage, um, um, storage to make it multifunction. Um, working table that can double up as a dining table as well. And another thing to consider is, in Korea now, there's the growing number in terms of single person household. So because of that, they tend to occupy smaller houses, small needs, so we need to think about developing products that can suit that, not the bulky or the big item furniture, but more towards to fit into the single person household. The other market potential will be on the creative content industry, in particular gaming and animation. Korea is the world's fourth largest gaming industry in 2018, with market value of 11.7 billion US dollars. The virtual reality and role-playing mobile games are in demand in Korea, and of course create potential for Malaysian companies. Even though focus now is on mobile games, the PC games should not be overlooked since there are more than 10,000 internet cafes in Korea. For animation, one way to penetrate into Korea is to collaborate with Korean company as a way to enter Korea. Some co-production have been successful in the recent years, for example, like the animation series Boeing the Play Ranger, which was broadcasted in Korea channel EBS. Next potential would be on confectionery. Imports of three major confectionery products, bakery, namely bakery, chocolate, and sugar confectionery from the world, was valued at 924 million US dollars last year. Malaysia was the third largest supplier of the major confectionery in Korea last year, with a spot value of 101 million US dollars. Malaysia also is a top supplier to Korea for cookies and biscuits with export value of 67 million US, 67 million dollars last year. Now, I move on to the next market potential, which is halal, be it products or services. Halal is another area that has potential in Korea. But first, we need to take note that the current Muslim population in Korea is not really that big. The number of Muslims in Korea is approximately 153,000, whereby the number of Korean Muslims, we talk about the locals there, is only about 40,000. Whereas, we did 150,000 and, 150, and 40,000, left with 113,300 people or Muslims which are from overseas. They are there to work or even to recite or, or on an assignment basis, and this is actually um, the majority of the Muslims in Korea. Even though the number is small, but it should not be taken for granted. The requirement for halal, in halal being product services in Korea, can be looked at two areas. One is that back in 2015, the former president, um, President Park Kum Hee, she made, um, how say that, um, she created a bus whereby she wanted to promote halal in Korea. But the halal in Korea is more towards to manufacture halal products in Korea and to export it to the world, especially to focus countries like the Middle East. So when we take a look at that, there are potential for machine companies, for example, to, to supply uh, the, the food ingredients, whatever, the, the flavoring, the additives to those companies who are manufacturing the halal products. Be it in terms of services, we can see that there, there's a number of Korean companies that will want to actually to manufacture um, halal products and would be uh, requiring the, the JAKIM certification because to them, even though in Korea they have their own 
um, certification called the Korea Muslim Federation, being the certification body, but they prefer to use JAKIM uh, certification, bo uh, certification. At the same time, they're also looking for consultancy, how to develop their halal industry but for the companies as well. And the next area that we should look at is to cater to the number of Muslim tourists in Korea. Last year, there were about 950,000 Muslim tourists in Korea, and the number is ever-growing. So there are a lot of opportunities in terms of opening up the halal restaurants, providing the halal, um, what they call that, food um, to, um, to, the, uh, to the Korean market, whereby this is to fulfill the need of the ever-growing of the uh, Muslim tourists in Korea. How to be successful in Korea? One is that we need to select the right importers and distributors, meaning that we need to get the reliable source of importers and distributors. Because there are a lot of listings that what we have encountered, whereby there are a number of companies, when they have been tricked by the Korean companies, they say that they have agreed to do this and that, but apparently they, they are not able to do that. So, the needfulness of to get the right importers and distributors are important. Second, to focus on the demand preferences, like for the size, shape, design, and packaging. Korea is a country that is looking at what is the trend at the moment. For example, like, like I said earlier on, on the furniture, to focus on the single household. And uh, because in Korea now, the number of people who are not married is in the rise. So um, when we want to um, provide products to Korea, we need to look at what would be the current trend in terms of the sizing. Because to them, they wouldn't want uh, a drink which is too big. They want it to be um, simple to hold and then not to, because of that, because of if the size is too big, then it could lead to wastage. Um, also, like the shape, design, and also the packaging. So these are the things that what the Malaysian company need to adhere to in order for them to be successful in Korea. The third one is getting the market understanding, that language. People um, think that majority of Koreans speak English, but they are not. Um, even when you go to the market, or even, I think because uh, when we go to the market, or even to the supermarket, no, we thought that they're able to speak a little bit of English, but it is actually difficult to get. Majority of them would rather speak in Korean. So understanding a little bit of the language is important, and understanding the culture as well. Because when you go out for actually um, dinner or lunch with the, the party, you need to make sure that you, have, you pay consent to the elder or the CEO, because normally the CEO would be the eldest person in the room how you project yourself, how you actually don't, like a simple thing they say, like you don't eat before the, the CEO eats. As simple as that. And then the, the fourth one is to back up with legal services and to do due diligence. Why I, I say like to back up with legal services? Because sometimes um, company, they just sign the MOUs or the MOAs or they don't get it checked properly um, with the lawyers. They just make sure that they are not um, at the contract, for example. They are not um, to be, uh, what do you call that? In the end, they are at the losing part. Uh, they should be able to get it checked and to make sure that we, it should be on a win-win situation. How we can assist you as the company? First, of course, we can provide reliable contacts to you. How we do that, we have, uh, we have actually trusted database that we have actually developed throughout the years. At the same time, with our network with the associations in Korea and also the chambers and commerces, we are able to get the trusted and reliable um, contacts for you. 
and to make sure because all the contacts will be of quality to you. Second, we can also arrange meetings for you. Um, if you are planning to go to um, Seoul in a month's time, and then you want to meet up with potential buyers or distributors, let us know, and then we will try and uh, arrange that for you. Market intelligence. We can, besides what you have, you can get from market website, market intelligence that from in the form of product, product market studies or market alerts. You can always give us a call as well or email us and to check would there be any new, um, for example, like regulations or new developments taking place that might have, could have an effect to your company. We are more than assist to check with the relevant body and to provide you with the latest information. Facilitate visits. Sometimes companies would like to visit uh, the, factory, the, menu, uh, the, the factory of their potential company. So we can actually arrange and we can actually contact the potential um, the, the factory and, and discuss on what would be the best way for the visit to be done. Uh, business meetings. Normally, we do get requests from companies who are participating in an exhibition on their own. Then they call, they call us up to say, like, okay, we are participating in this exhibition at Kintex or Coex, for example. And uh, they wanted us to assist whether or not we can arrange some meetings for them. We would more, we would be more than happy to do that. We can arrange big meetings for you so that you'll be able to get the best of your participation in the exhibition and your visit to Seoul. So the building is Standard Chartered Building, located at Jongno, or the new station is Jongga Station, the subway station. This is where Madrid office is located in Seoul. At any point in time, if you are in Seoul, do make it a point to contact our office in Seoul. We're more than happy to receive you at our office and to discuss further your business plans with us in Seoul. So with that, thank you very much, and come to Thank you, Mr. Izam. And last but not least, we have Mr. Shah Nizam Ahmad, former TC of Matrade Tokyo. Let us welcome Mr. Shah Nizam. Thank you, Dain. Ladies and gentlemen, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good afternoon to all. Uh, my name again is Shah Nizam bin Ahmad and today I will share with you information uh, about venturing into the Japanese market. In this presentation, uh, I will cover four main areas, which is one about Japan and about our bilateral trade between Malaysia and Japan. Second, business opportunities. Third one, the success factor doing business in Japan. And the lastly is how Matrade Japan can assist you in your export journey. A little bit about Japan. Uh, Japan is the third largest economy in the world after the US and China. Compared to Malaysia, we are 35th largest. Uh, Japan currency is in yen, uh, language in Japanese. Japan population is 126 million, which is almost four times more than, than Malaysia. GDP, Japan stood at 4.872 trillion US dollar to compare with Malaysia, 314.5 billion USD. Japan is of doing business, is ranked 39, whereas Malaysia ranked at 15 in the world. Tokyo is the capital city, as you know and also the largest city. Other major cities is Yokohama, Osaka, and also Nagoya. In 2018, Japan was Malaysia's fourth largest trading partner after China, Singapore, and US with a value of ringgit Malaysia 134.24 billion. In terms of export, Japan was Malaysia's fifth largest export destination with a value of 70.38 billion ringgit. We export to Japan were mainly liquefied natural gas, which is LNG, 
electrical, electronics, E&E, manufacturers of metal and wood products. And Japan was Malaysia's fifth largest import source. Meanwhile, Malaysia was Japan's 14th largest trading partner, 12th largest export destination, and 12th largest import source. I also would like to share some key important current market development in Japan for your information. Apart from being the third largest world economy, Japan also is highly dependent on import of natural resources. Japan is also among the largest importer of LNG, whereby for your information, Malaysia was Japan's second largest LNG import source after Australia. Japan currently experiencing a rapid aging population in the country, which has shifted the market dimension of Japan. Recently, the government of Japan has imposed a new increased consumption tax of 10% beginning on 1st October 2019, compared to 8% before the hike. This is mainly to boost Japan's social welfare program in the country. With those current market development in Japan, together our observation by our office in overseas in Japan, uh, we have identified four main business opportunities that Malaysia company can further to explore. Those four major areas are halal, second is biomass, third, creative industry, which is mainly on the gaming industry, for the aged care market. As for halal, yes, it is a unique situation, similar like my friend Mr. Iza mentioned about Korea. The country itself is not a Muslim country. Furthermore, Japan is well known for a country that is a very stringent and strict requirement imposed to imported goods, especially on food. Nonetheless, due to new development in Japan, it has triggered uh, the market's interest to source halal products into Japan. From our observation, the two major contributors to the search of halal demand in Japan was mainly driven by two factors. One is Japan tourist in the strategy. Second one is Japan international events. Japan tourist in strategy is to generate the country economic growth by encouraging tourist spending in Japan. 2018 have generated 40.6 trillion Japanese yen, which is equivalent to 374 billion US dollars to the Japan economy. Japan is expecting to receive 40 million uh, visitors by 2020. This is also a move to prepare the country to host major events such as the Olympic 2020, the Paralympic 2020, and also the World Expo in Osaka 2025. While receiving a sudden increase number of tourists, Japan also experienced to receive many feedbacks, yeah? such as uh, need to have more hotels, accommodation, uh, to have more English signages for the tourists, to have a better access from a mobile phone and also phone lines, and also to include the request to have uh, more eating places that serve halal food for the visitors, and also the visitors to enjoy Japanese food, that is halal. And this has triggered the business community in Japan uh, to source halal products and services into Japan. And Madrid uh, took this opportunity to push further uh, to showcase Malaysian products and services into the Japanese market. We have geared up our promotion activities promotion uh, to promote Malaysian halal products and services to Japan by bringing Malaysian companies to participate with trade shows in Japan, such as Foodex, uh, other trade shows, food trade shows in Japan, and also bringing buyers uh, from Japan to come to Malaysia, uh, participate in our Mihas trade show in Kuala Lumpur. HK also have been identified as one of the business opportunities for us to explore. Similar to other countries, uh, similar to what uh, my friend has mentioned about their countries, Japan is also the first country in Asia which 26% of the population is over 65 years old, making it the world leading super-age society with a life expectancy of 81 years old 
for the male, and also 87 for the ladies. Japan rapid aging population continues to send ripple effects through its society and also economy. Japan elderly population is more than 35 million right now. This development has created three main business areas, which are one, healthcare and pharmaceuticals, two, nursing services, third, the lifestyle products. Especially on the lifestyle products, it covers food, healthy food, uh, beverages, uh, easy to swallow for the senior citizens, nutritious in terms of food, furniture, which is light, stackable, uh, apparel, uh, medical support equipment and products. These are the products that are highly in demand in Japan right, at the moment. Another one is creative content in gaming industry in Japan. Japan is also famous for its gaming industry. Japan currently is the third largest gaming market in the world after the US and China. For 2018, Japan games market has valued 19.2 billion US dollar on game revenue with 60.6 .6 million gamers on board. Japan gaming uh, market covers mobile games, console games, and PC games. With many startup companies and independent game developers in Malaysia, Matri foresee that there are many business opportunities that Malaysian companies can work with the Japanese counterpart in Japan. Currently, there are a number of Malaysian companies already collaborating with the Japan companies in the area of game development. The game it covers art and characters, graphic creation, outsourcing services, localization services, and many more. Leveraging to this opportunity, Matri has organized many buyer programs and participate in overseas, in Japan especially, in prominent trade shows, such as the Tokyo Game Shows. Yeah? We bring last, uh, for this year, we bring 15 companies to Tokyo Game Shows, and we have generated sales of 147.1 million ringgit from 142 meetings arranged at TGS 2019. Another one is biomass in Japan. Uh, after the earthquake or tsunami hit Japan Fukushima nuclear power plant 2011, they have a shortage of power supply and began to rely heavily on fossil fuel and coal for their thermal power. As to date, Japan is among the largest importer of LNG and coal. And to move away from this, they have encouraged more renewable energy such as solar, wind, geothermal, and also biomass. Now, Japan has become one of the world's largest renewable energy market for biomass, and the industry is looking for countries such as Malaysia to source palm kernel shell, PKS, empty fruit bunch, EFB, for their thermal boilers. From our observation, there are six key factors in the Japan market after our experience working with the Malaysian companies. Yeah? Among others, one, study Japan consumer behavior and preferences because the market prefers healthy rated products for food, fine packaging with the right size and price. You also need to understand Japanese business culture. Some of the business culture whereby they are making a little bit, taking a longer time to make their decision. Third, working closely with the Japanese importers. This is important for you to, uh, to comply and also to respond whatever needs your importer ask you to do because they need to make sure everything is in order. Third, the fourth one is product suitable, uh, suita suitability to the Japanese market. Even though you have export your products to other market, it doesn't mean that the same product you can go into the Japanese market. You may need to do some amendment and changes of your product to, to go to Japan. The other one is obtaining international standards. Apart from adhere to all the standards of the Japan uh, imports, having other international standards can really differentiate your products in the market, such as has a, and some sustainability certification for your product. Japanese language is also very important. You may need to have a translator to come with you when doing business, so that there is no miscommunication between you and so your importer. And they really uh, prefer when they discuss with you in Japanese, 
So having a, transl a translator is very important while you're having a business meeting with them. Even though it looks uh, very difficult, but we have many companies that already export to, to Japan. And there even some even set up their business in Japan itself. This is to make sure they have a stronghold in the market. How can Matre assist? We, uh, Matre, will share rules, regulations, market information, the latest information to our Malaysian companies, and also trade inquiries. For example, Japan, Japan office have received 380 inquiries, serious one. Uh, the last year, so almost 50% of them is FMB, food and beverages. So this is kind of information that we would like to share with the Malaysian companies. So if you are a metric member, then we'll just straight send and circulate information to metric members. Apart from that, we also arrange for business matching for you, not only for you, but also for our importer from Japan and coming to Malaysia. And then we can connect you with the reliable network for Japan. We have two offices in Japan. One in Tokyo and the other one in Osaka. Our colleague, Mr. Nickman, is the one that managing the Tokyo. So if you have any inquiry or any, uh, you have visit to, to Japan, feel free to contact our office in Tokyo at tokyo at matre.gov.my. Okay. With that, I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shanizam. And also, thank you to Mr. Chong, Ms. Amilatun, and also Mr. Isam. Ladies and gentlemen, since time is not on our side, we will end our session here. However, if you have any questions um, for our former TCs, do take the opportunity to approach them at the trade clinics, which is just outside the hall. Up next on our agenda, thank you, former TCs, for sharing with us your fruitful insights on your respective markets.